Hi everyone, today we are pulling from the world of Minecraft, and to be honest, I'm sort of surprised I haven't tried to remake anything from this game yet. This sort of started when I was working on a portal from the Portal series of games, and I realized that it probably wouldn't be so easy. What I thought instead was to make a nether portal from Minecraft. A nether portal is an obsidian structure enabling players to pass between the nether and the overworld. It's usually about 4 blocks wide and 5 blocks high, and you ignite it using a flint and steel. This activates a purple portal that will take you to the nether world in Minecraft. When you jump into the portal, you'll have to wait for a few seconds while you see a screen effect and then you're transported into the new location. We're going to try and recreate this in Game Builder Garage using teleports and some screen effects. The portals are also two-way functioning, so you can transport yourself back to the regular world through the portal in the nether. Now, a lot of you have been saying that I go too fast in these tutorials. OH MY GOODNESS! So I'm going to really try and slow it down today. Let me know in the comments if this works better or if it is too slow. We're going to start with our basics. We have a world node on with a texture attached to it. This is my closest approximation to the grass texture in Minecraft. And when you attach it to the world, it will lay itself over all of the world elements, including the floor and the walls. Our next element is our player character, and I wanted to make it first person, so I added this small box on a Y negative Y positive connection point so that it's above the character, and we attach the camera to that instead of directly to the person. Our portal itself is made up of these simple box objects that are set to be only solid, so that they're invisible, so that the textures apply evenly, and they're non-movable. I rearranged those in general shapes until we got something that approximates what a portal would look like. You can use the grid lines to help you. Next, I made one solid texture for the obsidian block, and I attach it to every object that's going to have that texture. If we were doing Minecraft grass, we could do something like having a grass texture for the top, a dirt and grass for the sides, and then a pure dirt texture that we would apply to boxes underneath that top layer. You can select which texture face textures appear on when you attach them to a box. This would let you do multiple on one object to texture the sides differently. The basic concept for our visual portal is done now. We have the portal itself and the inside material. The first thing we're going to do is create a simple toggle that will change the active texture of the interior portal material. There are probably more optimal ways to do this, but I tried to do these builds in a human readable sort of way. We'll start with a constant node on and attach it to a timer. The timer will be set to whatever we want the change interval to be. In this case, 0 0.50 or half a second. We'll then run that into a counter node on. We'll plug it into the count up input. We'll set the counter node on to loop and on a range of 0 to 1. This will make the counter toggle between 0 and 1 on every half second. We can then take the positive signal and attach it to one texture, and add a not node on, and run that negative signal through the not node on into the other texture that we're alternating with. This is a simple way to get two textures to switch on and off of one object. My artistic abilities aside, it is looking a little bit more animated. What we don't go over here, but you could also do, is create some empty box objects with a texture that has small purple dots that also alternate, and that would look like the small purple materials that wisp their way in and out of the portal in Minecraft. We're going to take note of the dimensions of our portal object, and we're going to create a touch sensor that is of the same dimensions. In this case, that's x1.6, y2.4, and z.40. We'll then also set it to only check for the person node on object. We'll be using this touch sensor to detect when the player is within the bounds of the portal. The next thing we're going to do is add in the screen effect. We'll get a head node on from the first person category. The head node on will always occupy the origin point of the camera, regardless of which camera you use. This is great for doing things like screen overlays and HUDs. We'll create a box that we attach to the first person head node on. 
We'll give it a size that's not too large, and we'll set it so that it is movable only, with a connection point of center center. That means that one of the faces of the box will be visible in front of the head, therefore in front of our camera. We'll then simply just attach it to the head nodon. Now you can create a separate texture for the screen overlay, but I'm just going to reuse these two that I have for the portal. We can't simply attach them to the new box because we don't want them to always be alternating. We only want that effect to take place once we're inside of the portal. So we can take two anodons, one for each of the textures, and run them through the touch sensor as one input and the original texture alternating logic as the second input. We're basically taking the same inputs as for the original textures, but making sure that they're run through the additional check of the touch sensor. Then we can attach those two textures to our box object that is attached to the head nodon. Now when we walk into the field of the touch sensor, we'll see that the textures cover the screen and alternate. The next step is to add in the ominous sound effects that occur when you're in the portal. We can do this with two different play sound nodons, and you'd likely want to select something that is in the loop category so that it will continue to play as long as you're in the portal. I think a combination of white noise and the heartbeats gets the vibe across. And we can simply attach the touch sensor output into those two play sound nodons. So we've got our visual portal and we have a touch sensor that tells our game when to display the on-screen effect and the sounds. Now what we're going to do is create the logic for the portal itself. We don't want to teleport instantly. What we want to do is create a time delay. We'll use a counter with a value of 120. And we'll set the count range from zero to 120 as well. We'll leave it on the range setting and we'll have the touch sensor count down. We'll also add a not node on. The way this works is that the counter will run down from 120 once we're in the touch sensor box. The game runs at 60 frames per second, so it will count down by 60 for each second. This will give us two seconds of portal time. The way we'll reset the counter when we're not in the touch sensor is by adding a not node on. When the touch sensor is not being activated, then we'll reset the counter and leave it at 120. Once it reaches zero, the counter will output a negative signal of zero. So we'll run that through a knot. This knot nodon is now our output for when to teleport. We can attach it to a sound to help the player know that they've reached the teleport time. And we can also send it to our teleport nodon. So we'll add in our teleport entrance, set it to detect only the person, and give it the same dimensions as the touch sensor. It's then as simple as plugging it in and placing everything on top of each other in the right way. We'll then get a teleport exit and move it over to the side and check that things are working as they should be. When we jump in the portal, It'll turn on the screen effect, the sound, and after two seconds, we'll hear the activation sound and we'll teleport to the teleport exit. Now, to create the corresponding portal, we can actually copy almost everything and simply move it over. We don't have to copy the head overlay effect, we can simply send the output from the second portal's touch signal also into that AND nodon so that the overlay effect occurs when either touch sensor is activated. It can get tricky to work with teleports that run back and forth with each other, so just make sure that you're keeping track of which teleport entrances and exits are assigned to the correct letters.
So we're connecting the touch sensor back into the second input of those original AND nodons. If you are running out of node on space, you can also optimize this by getting rid of some of these duplicates and carrying over the connections from some of the original textures onto these new objects. And then we're making sure that our teleports are set correctly. Entrance A at portal 1, exit A at portal 2, entrance B at portal 2, and exit B at portal 1. You'll know that you've done all the teleports correctly if it works when you try it. So now when you jump in, you'll experience the effect and then you'll be teleported to the other nether portal. To help sell the effect, you can close off one portal from the other so that you can't see the other portal and you can change the environment to make it look like you've really transferred over into the nether or if you're using it in your own game, into an entirely different area.